Do you think that Bird could have been successful in L.A. and Magic successful in Boston? I think Magic could have been successful in, in Boston. See, I don't I, think. I don't. I don't know. I don't know about Bird. You got to remember. Yeah. He has to. He has to come in with you guys. You got to remember. Now you're talking about a fast group and a half court player. Mm -hmm. It would have worked because you, now you got him and Kareem. It could have worked. You got to remember, Bur Magic over there is still going to speed them up. He's see, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. You, I, you, I you got to remember, the, work, guard, yeah. the guard is going to... I think they'd have figured it out but, eventually. That, but that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Who's going to figure it out faster? First, yeah, that's it. Who's I, gonna, I just didn't see it working. Who's going to maximize the talent around them? Who, who's gonna, was Bird going to... You got to remember, Bird is Bird, and everyone is filling up. Magic is filling in the, the spots. Yeah. So there, he <clears> gets <throat> to make those guys a little bit better, a little mm -hmm. bit flashier. So... It changes the, the dynamic, but you got to remember, you're still talking about two masterminds. Yeah. They figure it out because you're going to adjust to their, their skill level. But if Bird's here, you guys are not as fast. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I really do believe it's the basketball guys put them two, two players two right where they were supposed to be. They couldn't have been anywhere else and they've been as successful. But I do agree with you. When you talk Magic Johnson and you're talking basketball, you've got to say Larry Bird. If you're talking Larry Bird, you've got to say Magic Johnson. I would say both of those guys were so good, you could build, they, they changed the franchise wherever they would go. No, that's what, yeah. That you, but that's that's you what said, figure it to, out. To, that, that's what me growing up, it was just one of those things where it was two cities that were totally different. But the same culturally, but it was the same goal on the court. We yeah, beat each other's yeah. ass and, and win the best man wins. Yeah. One thing Larry said to me, uh, he never did any sugar honey iced tea talking. He just kind of like played. And but this one time he said, came down and I'm playing him. This is 1987. We're playing for the champion. And he goes, um, Coop, I'm about to wear your ass out. So I'm locked in on it now, and I'm, this the bass is behind me, and I'm here, and Robert Parrish comes down and sets a pick. And I was hard to set a pick on, so I knew I was going to get through it, but Larry takes me in, he comes off this pick, and he comes off right about the elbow. Dennis Johnson threw him the basketball, and Kareem steps up. So Larry catches the ball, and I'm right behind him. And he catches the ball, and he goes up. I said, I'm going to smack this shit. <laughs> he goes up. Kareem is there, my hands are there, and I'm like this. I don't know how this guy got the ball to Robert Parrish, but he throws it to Parrish for a pick and roll play. Parrish gets the ball slam dunk. Boston goes up, the fans going crazy. He goes, I told your ass. And to me, that might seem like something simple, but that's the greatness of a great player in Larry Bird. And from that point forward, we never talked. He never said anything else, but it was just the fact that he got, he, he wore my ass out on that play. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the thing I respected a lot about him. Because Larry could score with or without the basketball. One of the greatest plays you've ever seen him play, uh, Boston versus Detroit Pistons. Johnny Moses is calling the game. Larry jumps out of bounds, steals the ball. Johnny Moses, Bird steals the ball, Bird steals the ball. He throws it to DJ, DJ lays it in, they beat uh, Detroit. Though that kind of player there, that's the ones that you like to see and like to play against. And that was the thing, really, I think the Lakers got the, the last word in the rivalry winning because things for the Celtics fell short, right? His body kind of broke down. And then when they had help, it was that we were seeing the Lem Bias moment. Like, that's where his help was going to come. You know what? Uh, that is such a tragic accident that happened with that young man, Lynn Bias. And we had a friend of uh, his, Adrian Branch, mm -hmm close friend of his, and he told us about that that night uh, when all that went down. I'm going to say this, and I've never said this before. Had Boston got, got Lynn Bias, and they played against us, they would have beat our ass every time. That's how good Lynn Bias was. That was the crazy thing. That's Lynn where the Bias future of the franchise was going to go. was a better player, well, just as good a player as James Worthy. Do you remember Lynn Bias? No. Nah. I, kid, I mean, I know the name yeah, and, you no, know, heard the stories. This kid could jump out the gym, could shoot a jump shot, run the floor, block shots with the best of them. Had Boston got him, it would have been hard for us to beat them. We would, we, I don't think we'd ever beat them again. Him, Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Kevin McHale. It would have been, that probably would have went down as the best front line for players that you could ever have in the history of the game. Okay. How how is Boston set up to even get 
that pick. That's Red R back. <laughs> Big mood, Mr. Shaking yeah, and that moving, was a trade man. coming it off was, that, yeah. that 86 team people said was the greatest yeah. team ever. Yeah, that's like, how do you, like, like when moving you hear those players and, and, and the draft Because he knew, because he knew that these guys are aging. I need to infuse yeah. young talent. We saw him and it's like, this guy's going to change the and game. And he had made that move two years before and he had traded to where he was able to get that first, uh, got the number one pick, man. Mm. That, and and that's that's just, that, like, it's... But it was recognizing what we talk about is the younger modern skill player was coming that had the physical, he had the 40 inch vertical, he had the six, eight, you know, in the wingspan, in the jump shot, like you said, he was refined. Yeah, but this guy could jump up and, you know, the white line at the, yeah, uh, the yeah, top yeah. could hit both hands. Oh, he was Take one step. Oh, he was yeah, jump up. And Lynn Bias was terrible.